And we're back with the Token Talk Show with uh, Tanner and Derek. That's Tanner. I'm Derek. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, let's try that one more time. Okay. Like, they are not high yet. Not high yeah. yet. Okay. Welcome back to the Token Talk Show with Derek and Tanner. Now tonight we have a special guest. We've known her from uh, for a few years yeah, from school. Back in the uh, old school and days. She uh, does some acting on and off. Please welcome Jillian. Hi, oh, y'all are sweet. <laughs> you, uh, you're not on camera. You gotta yeah, come you, in. You would want to come and maybe be in between us, possibly. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, here, we, cool. here we go. How are you tonight, Jillian? Ah, uh, life's pretty sweet, guys. I am in an air bomber jacket. I feel like Amelia Earhart if she was, like, a scared of heights. Well, that's... Short. <laughs> that is apparent. That is apparent. So I stand between the two of you and look up Yeah, I so saw just in our blazers. I mean, we don't mean you to... look schmancy. Oh, I've never yeah. seen Things you in any kind of formal wear. Right? <laughs> like, three years. I, I don't wear formal wear formally. Formally, um, you do, but... Uh, now you do though. Formally, I do. Future, but futuristically, you do now. English. Is <laughs> what is, what is this English? Word? I can't. I can't wait to talk because it's gonna get even oh, yeah. more gibberish. <laughs> Sorry. I love you guys. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get this joint on. Uh, last night was 4:20, so we got ourselves a couple of these. Couple, couple of free joints, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, come, on down, come on down, get some. Come on get down. Come on down. The edibles joints. are gone, though. Those are like. Yeah. Completely Next, completely year. Uh, Next year. Next we'll year. We'll 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 we made chocolate chip blondies. They were really good. Ooh. Uh, I, wait. Oh yeah, those are good. Okay. Cause brownies are nice, but like chocolate chip blondies, man. <sighs> Wait, did you guys like buy these or roll them yourself? Uh, this one was for free. Yeah, they're pretty good rollers. Actually, the guy I was talking to who 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 rolled these himself, I, his name's Tim, and yeah. he uh, he said that he 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 learned from a Belgian man and a French man from France, and he they taught him they were master rollers. You must That's travel all of Europe to find that is the master their profession and, too. Yeah, he learned to, to roll like the perfect joints, and this I gotta say is a pretty fucking cool, good joint. <coughs> yeah, my buddy Spencer always used to be able to do them like like you'd get them from the store, and like I remember for Christmas he had this um, like eight inch long giant joint for the whole entire house and he had to put a wire Holy. in the middle of it to keep it all together because it was like at least it was at least like what six to seven grams of weed in that joint oh Hot dog. shit i have a picture of it i'll show you guys it'd be a sad day if, it, if something like that canoed or canoed yeah oh canoed hey do you want to smoke yeah sure Let's uh let's introduce our cameraman for the night. Uh, this is where we shrink. Mike <laughs> Mike Schnob. Mike Schnob. This is my my uh, biological brother. Um, <laughs> He's adopted, actually. Uh, we've um we've known each other our whole lives. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your entire, uh, our whole life. Uh, he, he's gonna be doing well, uh, right, your entire life. Uh, our, uh, I mean, he was missing for a little while, but like yeah, yeah, yeah and then he anyways he came back. He's gonna be doing a lot of our um, <laughs> our uh, website designing stuff and uh, working on our advertising. Basically, he's our behind the scenes man. You know, make sure that we don't get you know fucked up. I guess <laughs> you know raped. The more uh, the business related. I love how like one of those came after the other like order of priorities here. Yeah. First off, our website looks good. Second off, no molestation. Just like yeah. into that order yeah. of importance. Seriously, it really does because it doesn't matter if you got raped if you have a bad website. No, I, I think mean, this. Fair. I think it was yeah. supposed. To, unless what, you know, I mean, I don't care what order it goes. Neither which way is getting to, covered in my website. We need to fix the canoe. 
as as you were saying. Yeah, so I'm the dude who comes and like do. make sure that advertising and it was the websites in full function. Fascinating. And these two guys have a fucking awesome advertising guy. Guy. Just smile and nod, boys. Just smile and nod. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mike. Took you, took you a little while there, but you got there. Slowly but surely, <laughs> on this journey, on this journey, fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Just you will be missed. Oh, terribly, terribly missed. He's right there, though. Last <laughs> poor York, we hardly knew he. Yeah. Um, and it was back to the last real point, guest. I hardly knew thee. Oh, yeah. So gone. It's coming, it's going, it's going quick. <laughs> goes so fast these days. It's well, it's always here. the first half of the joint goes by like, and then the second half is like, it's a like millennium, holy shit, yeah. this is. I think it's because your brain just starts processing time a little bit quicker. No, I, I don't. Just, I don't think it's the speed of the of the world. <laughs> the speed the of the turning, universe temporarily slows. It slows so you can down enjoy it. through but your. It's, it slows it's not down through subtle. your own. That would have to be subtle. It slows down through your, your own brain through your own that. perspective. So it's 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 it's, it's truly a, a magnificent phenomenon. The fact that you're grabbing your heart right now while that's happening, just like <laughs> this, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is my philosophy on life, and just like goes from there. I always speak from the heart, if any, anybody knows me. Yeah, well, I'm the brains, he's the heart. I'm the lack of impulse control. <laughs> Perfect we team, that. really. That, yeah. Perfect team. You know, usually we take uh, just b one bong hit or something, so to, we're usually not out here this long, but... Uh, we got joints, you know? I kind of like the joints shit, too. It's, like, it's true. The spring weather, it's crisp. The air is nice. Maybe we should, you know, do some uh, joints sometimes, you know? Yeah, we could, you know, we, we, like anything is really possible. Edibles, uh, it'd be nice to have, like, some baked goods on the show. Fuck. I mean, I bake, so, like, hi. Bake. Hi. <laughs> Get baked. Did Hi. not do that on purpose, but I'm glad it came out. Which that one way. in what order? Alternating. Things get baked while you are baked. You get high. I get high. I get high, and then I bake things on high, and then I get more high as I eat the baked things I baked on high. What? Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, I just have a lot of like unused weed, butter, and chocolate chips at home, and I need to put them to use. Fair enough, fair well, enough. Maybe we can help you with that. There you go. Just um, randomly shows up at your house at 2 a.m. Guys, I got bored and I went baking again. I mean, get high. What a get hot. I'm like, trying to sleep right now. I live 10 minutes from you. You don't sleep. Me? No, they're like, you'll text me at like 2 in the morning. I'm almost convinced that no, you may not be. Always. Only on Thursdays. You may be a vampire. But just that's really good at staying out of the sun. Well, I mean, I have to work in the morning tomorrow, so I'm going to die. I actually was three hours late for work today because, uh, well, I, it was 4.20 last night, so I, I, I went out and I uh, got really drunk and high, went to bed at 6 in the morning, then I uh, get up at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Didn't happen get up at uh 1:30 by a phone call from my work being like can you be here in 15 minutes i'm like can you give me 30 i was like and then i get to work and like no one really even like cared that much well, they're like man it was kind of, it, like you should, that's not good to do but man at least you're telling us that being up front that you gotta you're be just saying the truth drunk, you know you, just, you warned them too the night before you said it got just so you guys know i'm partying uh, how many orders came in anyways like um, I think I actually it's got called in because the orders started coming in. That's what, like the kitchen, like oh Brett, Brett, the guy supervising. I, I went up to him. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, I fucked up. It was three hours late. He's like, I didn't even notice you. Were here. <laughs> That's because he was like, still high from 4:20. Uh, like, no. let's well, no, face a, it, the day pours 4:20. Who doesn't want pizza? Yeah, well, it's because like yeah. deli drivers will leave for like an hour and not come back. He's so like, I think people are just used to. Like you know, like when the deli driver's gone, they don't question it. Are you a deli driver? Uh, yeah. I thought you were a pizza boy. Yeah, deli delivery. Okay, deli to me means delicatessen. I'm Jewish, Tanner. I'm thinking Ooh. chopped liver. I'm thinking <laughs> I mean, pickles. It's I'm how thinking, we talk about it at work. Like freaking shuka, you're not. Uh, mm. 
mm. delicious. It is delicious. But there's a difference between a nice chopped <laughs> liver sandwich and a freaking pepperoni pizza. The bear? Both are delicious. Ooh, combine the two. I actually, uh, dun, dun, last dun, summer, dun, was dun. a deli boy at a grocery store. So I'd slice meat up. I'm a deli boy. Deliception. <laughs> I meant to stroke your face, not get it. Well, I, I, I think I thought, you like, I thought you like licked it. You're like, no. oh. I think it's time that we head on inside for our next portion of the show. Uh, the actual interview. The actual <laughs> interview, I guess. <laughs> so, I, no, let's I just talk we deli meat all night. We're gonna have more night. than two, three segments in the show. I mean, it's, it seems. depends, because sometimes you kind of have to break the ice a bit, you know, just yeah. talk about whatever. Because I'm a very closed person, as we can see. Yes. Man, you should really see uh, our last interview. Again. <laughs> Total opposite people on the interview. It's hilarious. Well, that's the dynamic of the planes going by. Hello! You didn't say hello back. I'm sorry. That's just Superman sure it's not, going by it's and not he farted. Personal. Superman's fart. What am I gonna do with you? <laughs> Shockwaves in the air, man. It's crazy. There are that two people farts, in this world. There's power in that fart. There's power. Fuck it. Yeah, there it is. There you there go. go. Thanks, I needed the help. Uh, yeah, 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 just like slowly sound <laughs> searching the soundboard for it. <laughs> come on, come You're on. You're gonna need practice if I'm giving you that power. Well, Can I have I, the power? I trust him with the power. I don't trust you. The power of voodoo? Well, you're, you're, voodoo? You remember what you said earlier? Very... You were the no impulse control? We cannot give people with <laughs> impulses <laughs> that thing. No, 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 no. And now I have it. And now it is the Token Talk Show <laughs> with Tanner and Jillian. Hey! hey. Eliminate the competition. Uh, now get the fuck out of here. Brains. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> now, <coughs> we have Julian on here today, and we're going to be doing an interview, as we have done in the past. As now, our show is actually about, it's about interviewing. And every day, so naturally, we think about questions for these interviews. Give us a, give us a little bit of know-how here as to, like, um, you, you, we, we, we used to go to school together, right? Yeah, and for like a solid six months. There's a little bit of time there, and uh, what, uh, like, since since graduation, like, what have you been, like, like, we, a acting school was insane. Let's just be honest. Let's, just let's be... a tad. <laughs> let's clarify first, she is an actor. Yeah. So you do acting. So elaborate <laughs> on things, that. Yeah. We, we, we just want to know, um, in that time, like, what has you, what's been your focus, you know? What, what, what is your question? Is the first question yeah. you should probably ask These anyone. Questions are, are, <laughs> These questions are... She's got it. She's yeah. got the thing. No impulse control. See, you're supposed to do the laughter there. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. <clears throat> I am curious as to... That's my favorite one throughout all of this. Oh, that is, that is applause to me. That is that is where the impulse control is going to be needed most. So tell us about... Um... Your acting, your uh, acting career so far. Do you have anything notable that you've done in your past? Anything notable? Um, so far, just the productions we did at school. Like after the six month when I was wrapping up, you guys were graduating from the animation program. Yeah. And yeah. after you left, I ended up doing the comedy conservatory there, which let me do like some headlining jobs at Yuck Yucks, uh -huh. which is really oh, fun. Man, that's cool. And we did a couple of our own comedy shows, and we got to start doing sketch writing. I'm actually working on this mini series called Adult the Fuck Out right now. Okay. Which we're tempted, like we're animating the opening for sure, and I just got one of those new Intuos tablets that's like stand up. You don't have to like do the weird eye hand coordination thing. Yeah. 
mucking around with that a little bit. Got it for real cheap, too, from this UBC girl. Super sweet. It's nice um, to get a discount. I know, right? Also, like, we ended up getting coffee afterwards and just shooting the shit for, like, an hour. Like, I paid her, and she's like, you're nice. Do you want to join me? I'm like, yeah, I do. And we just sat there. Like, you meet the nicest people in Vancouver. I mean, there's a real... Well, in my opinion, that's... That's totally true, but it's weird. I, I whenever I talk to uh, other people, like well, not whenever, uh, but I've had I've talked to a lot of people who say the opposite in Vancouver. It's like but an acorn. I think I think the thing is, it's so friendly for artists because like everybody's just like everybody thinks they're interesting. <laughs> and yeah. they go to each other and they just want to show how interesting they are. There's a lot of positivity yeah. out there too. But but it's it's in a positive way. But like I don't know how I'd meet half the people I met if I didn't have you know my art with me. I mean, it's I, a nice icebreaker, right? Like you can yeah. really like you can bring people into your world. Like this is a little bit of how I think. Yeah. In a physical or something that you can listen to. And I think it's like a little bit of a networking uh, mindset because you, you never know who you're going to meet and who you're going to, yeah, like, wh who you're going to be able to collab with in the future. And it's always exciting to just find out what people are doing. Yeah. It just kind of brings it back to the show. It's like you're just... I think I met you because I just started playing music and starting like a mini dance party in the lunchroom and we ended up talking. And then you ended up like one of the first parties I threw at the year and we just clicked. I, I think uh, you met me because of uh, Travis. Oh, because I I met him at the 340 once when I was doing karaoke, and uh, he was like, we we're both like hitting on this girl, but I ended up taking her home with me. And so, but like, at the middle of like uh, hanging out there, uh, I was like dancing with her and grinding up, and then like he he was totally cool sport. He was like he was like you're the man, and, like bowing down to me, and then like so then when he actually ended up going to the school a few months later, and we just like saw him, we were just like hey, hey buddy, yeah. and he just happened to be hitting on every single girl in his class. And all bringing them to the same place to go party, and that was uh, that was your your birthday party. Oh or? yeah, no, I had it wasn't a birthday party. I was just throwing a party yeah. for funsies. I've never yeah. actually I haven't had my uh, like a birthday party since I was twelve or thirteen and had my bat mitzvah. Ah. it's just never oh, yeah. like my birthday's in January, so it's never been the opportune well, time. I imagine yeah, that the, I like that. the bat mitzvah must be like. Oh, it was freaking huge. Like, you can't really top it, right? Like, no, you, you can. It'd be nice to have had a birthday where I didn't require, like, reading in front of my family while my grandmother silently judged uh, me. Like, that would have been lovely. I Although see. it was, like, really fun, though, because there was a major hockey game going on that day, and... I was so nervous that when I got up there, the first thing out of my mouth, instead of the tour portion, was like, so how about them Canucks? And just everyone Ooh. freaking, either out of pity or genuine humor, laughed at this shaking little 12-year-old girl. Oh, That's man. good. That, you know, it shows, shows good character. In a, in a moment of fear, you lighten the mood and... You, you probably, like, just sailed through after that. Oh, uh, yeah. No, yeah, honestly, I wish I could really do that. <laughs> Dude, there's fight, fright, or freeze, and my mode is usually fight. Not in an yeah. aggressive sense, but, like, running away to me does nothing. Mm. Like, even if you take a moment to think through what you want to do, you're still technically in fight mode rather than, like, I'm running away and avoiding my problems. Like, right. Take a stand. Take... If you have an opinion of some kind other than I do not care, yeah. Do what you got. To, like pick your battles, of course. Mm. But and try not to be a cunt. Exactly. Don't be a dick and live your life right. Yeah, exactly. Where's you know? Life's life's pretty simple. Like, did you ever hear about there's like this little book my mom used to quote from called Everything You Needed to Know You Learned in Kindergarten? And it's true. <laughs> It's entirely true. If you think of any life advice you ever give to anybody, you can sum it up to, this is something you were basically taught in like one word sentences in kindergarten. Not one word, but like one phrase sentences. What are they? I, I totally agree Naps are important. Yes. Sharing is caring. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Take care of, like if you make the mess, clean it up. Fun and play are both important. Like you can just go through like 
any but extravagant th- philosophies on life and narrow it down to something simplistic. What I've actually uh, found about life is that, like, you learn these things as a little kid and it just blows over your head for your entire life until you start actually learning the lessons as an adult that lead like, up to you it. realizing yeah. that this is the answer to that problem. And you're like, what the fuck? This is shit I learned in f- fifth grade. Why... That's why they teach it to you, but it just blows over your head as a kid because you're not living life yet. Not and and I knew I grew up extent. in different areas, so like, oh sorry, I cut you off, I didn't mean to. But like, elementary school was out in Pitt Meadows, Maple Ridge in Canada, and it was also like an IB school. So elementary school is like where you cement your manners and mm-hmm. where you were basically like, like the basics, how to make friends. It's like builds your foundation, but then high school is what shapes your personality. And I did that in Israel Mm. at an alternative school. And by alternative school, I mean unless you're a diplomats kid or you had the money to go to the fancy American school, the only other English-speaking school option that you could do that was financially affordable for me at the time was the delinquent school. So, like, you either didn't speak enough Hebrew or you were the kid who burned down your dormitory and we were all shoved like the 30 of us were just in this community center together for five years so then when i came back to canada here for school and this is what i learned socially throughout like the six-month program and the two conservatories after is manner wise it's grounded here so i'm too soft for my israeli friends they keep getting me to toughen up but what's protocol there is way too in your face and aggressive or blunt here like when there's a confrontation you're in this this middle point between the two you're either too too much or too little and stuff because we as you can probably tell when you watch the film we talk with our hands and mine's more toned down because I've been here long enough and I was raised here, but if I talked yeah. like some of my friends did, you would have been smacked by accident so many times. Wow. And they're like 10 times louder, or like if someone throws, down, if someone, let's say you're having a fight with a friend, if someone throws down the gauntlet, it's protocol to show up at their house. Like if you know where they live, you're at their door. It doesn't matter the time of night. It doesn't matter the time of day. At least in my friend group that I grew up in, yeah. and there was neighborhood. It's like if someone messages with you at two in the morning, going, "I'm calling you out," you're showing up at their door. The first bus or car ride you can get, and going, "You called me out. Let's do this. Let's yeah. talk." You're not gonna do anything violent, but you're going to have a conversation. But if you do that here, you're considered bad shit. <laughs> I feel like most people here would just hear whatever they were hearing about and then just sort people of like... People are kind of passive-aggressive. Just be here. like, you know what, if I see them again, I'll probably just not talk to them. Hmm. But that see, doesn't I'm not solve an aggressive your person, issue. But I do, I do speak my mind to people. I will confront them if I know there's an issue that yeah. needs to be. Like, I'm not just going to like let it just sit if I see that there's something that needs Maybe to be like done. A healthy medium, because you don't want to be but like. It's not like I'm gonna like you start fights. Oh no, 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 try. No. That's the whole point of doing it is to avoid issues. There you go. That's yeah. But, like, you don't. There's a difference between because sometimes when people say, "Oh, I'm just being blunt," they use it as kind of an excuse to be rude, and it's like, no, no, no. Be straightforward. Yeah. You don't need to sugarcoat things. You don't need to be mean about it either. And if you actually talk about it, is it confrontation still? Technically, yes, but confrontation doesn't necessitate any form of aggression or passive aggression. It doesn't always always happen. Like, it's literally just a conversation that isn't the most comfortable of conversations. (laughs) But, like, it's there. That's life, you know? You have to experience these every possible moment of emotion, right? And if you don't, then you're not... Living, living exactly. yeah. <laughs> living your life because you have to feel, you have to smell, see, and hear. The, and the secret, angry, all, all the senses. Sad. Secret to happiness is accepting that you're not going to be happy all the time. Boom, hot dog. That was bittersweet, babe. <laughs> I'm sorry, I actually yeah. made content. Oh, you're, what is the signal for, man? You just keep doing this. I don't know what that Best means. Best cameraman, give this guy a raise. <laughs> give him a. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe you should have this, and I should have this. I'm pretty. Crazies. You're fired.
I'm kidding. Come back. Come back. You see, uh, me, me and Derek's relationship is now broken. Yeah, I guess that's the end of the show. I mean, we just started, but that's yeah, no, we, we We have to do a detox here. Wait, we haven't even gotten to the detox yet? Yeah, now it's time for our next segment. Detox. Detox. <laughs> With Derek. And Tanner. Except he's the we Tanner. Gotta, and we, gotta, we gotta get better at that. With Tanner. And Derek. <laughs> Derek. And Tanner. It'll... And Jillian. Jillian. And yeah. with our guest star tonight, Jillian and Jilly Bear. Mike's over there. Jilly Bean. All of the Jillies. Yeah. All of the above. Okay, deep talks. So, what, ask we, away, man. what we do in deep talks is we ask a question. A, a deep, deep, deep question. Deep. Sometimes it's just a deep statement. And we sort yeah. of kind of, we, we try to evolve from or that. Or just something space. that gets you thinking, you know? Yeah. It, hey, unfortunately, some of the stuff was cut uh, in that video. We, um,. We keep having this memory problem with our cameras, so they run out before we're actually finished recording. So we lose, we've been losing shit, which is a pain in the ass, but you know, this is a learning process. So, so the deep talks question for this video was, if you could time travel to any date in history and spend 24 hours there, what dates would you choose? And the three of us were allowed to pick three dates. Um, my stuff got cut, unfortunately, so I'll just say it, it was 1985, Back to the Future's opening, opening night, because um, it would have been awesome, and the last time the Beatles played on concert on top of the roof, and uh, some date in the Jurassic era, because I'm an idiot, and I you know, would like to get killed by dinosaurs. Um, yeah. But these are the things you have to learn in... Through trial and as, error. As we're saying, <laughs> so the most struggle, boys. tell me, how, uh, what time would you, what are your three choices for the, for your time, your 24 hours? I, I love hours. how you ask questions. You don't know how you're going to ask it until 80% way through the question. Well, it's like anything. You got to form it. You got to form the process. You know, painter doesn't just paint the, the Vinci, like, People don't just ask whatever. questions. He takes breaks. They, you gotta, you gotta kind of like, you know, shade it. Anyways. Gotta, gotta sculpt your thing. Uh, no, and to answer your question that you asked at the very beginning of this before we went into deep talks, Ooh. currently auditioning for Studio 58. Back to the new question. Uh. Um, I want one day in the future, 2026, winter time, because I find, and I know it's like one of those weird superstition things, but for me, for some reason, even number years are really unlucky, and odd number years are really oh, lucky. Yeah. So I want to see like where I would be, like if this would be a continuing thing, or what where I would be going into like my late twenties, end of the year. Winter time's also all the holidays, so I would like choose a time around like Hanukkah and Christmas. So everyone's like usually in a good cheery, mood yeah, and yeah. cheery and stuff, and I just be like, where would I be in my life right around then? And I would probably choose. Well, I wouldn't choose location then, I guess, because I move often enough. Like, yeah, I lived it would in, just be wherever you were. I right? would just be wherever I were. And I that would be, be part of like, peeking into the future. It's like, where will I be? Yeah, because, yeah. like, yeah. this year alone, I'm planning on visiting Israel for, like, a few months if I can yeah. afford it, or visiting my cousins that are strewn throughout Europe if I wanted to before school starts in September, yeah. if I get in. Like, the scary thing... The great and the scary thing about life is just how much power you have to change it. Like, if I yeah. wanted to, I could take out half the money I have in my bank account right now, buy a ticket to Toronto, contact people there, send out resumes, run around for, like, a week, stay with maybe one other person I know or set up shop in, like, a and b within a month's time, you can, or a week's time even, you can start to just set up a life there. I just did that fast. I went from Alberta to here, just boom, I had 700 bucks pretty much, maybe a grand. Uh, I had the promise of a job that I didn't actually get. Uh, but I also had this place, which I, I knew like, like at least it would be a nice cushion because like 500 bucks is manageable, especially in freaking Vancouver area. Having your family, 
is kind of like uh, an, uh, an also like kind of safety net too because yeah, I feel like man. I could talk to you guys, which you're, I ended up having to do because like, I was a little late. You're like another another brother, you know. It's, yeah, it's kind of I feel like part of the family now that every time there's a family event, I'm expected to come. <laughs> the oh, no. it's, yeah, I want to hear him play. Get out! Get him to get out his guitar. Oh, hey, should we? Do you have your? Did you say all your time? Oh, I only said one, but like I can. We can just do one for me, and that's fine. Like if we don't have a lot of time. What do we? I also have to say mine. Yeah, he still says. Okay, okay. Uh, I can rattle off the other two real quick. Um, Let's hear. One, I want to go and be in like Argentina during the revolution. Ooh. Mostly because I had family that lived there around that time. And I only know about them through like, like my grandma. Stories and stuff. Stories, because like my family archives everything. If you go to my grandparents' house or like had great grandparents, they have like this storage area. It's books and books and journals and journals, like going way back to like early 1900s, wow. late 1800s. Just like, I feel like if you touch them, they will crumble into dust in your hands. That's awesome but, to have such a like, like a, a tapestry. Yeah, it's great, but at the same time, like, if you flash forward to nowadays, I've only actually met like maybe 10 of my cousins in person oh. and I have like a solid hundred or so that are strewn throughout the world. Like I have some in London and I've met one out of like maybe, I think I have like 15 out there if memory serves. Wow. Like and they keep popping up. All of a sudden you'll just get this email like, hey your cousin had a child and I'm like I didn't know I had a cousin in that part of the world and that they were pregnant but congratulations. Like crazy she wished genealogy is fucking going anywhere and finding someone you're related to. Well wow, that's cool. And stuff. Um so just to like get to explore family. That'd also be like the best birthday gift ever if someone did that like if people help chip in for like doing one of those DNA tests where you can track down family and where you're from and then you could like go and visit well, them. Well, like, that's the thing. So cool. I'm sure a lot of people are doing that. These days, oh, that yeah. DNA there was like stuff. a kick of it. Like, the Family Trees websites and all of that. Like, it's kind of cool to see your lineage and go back. But it, you know. But not just like, oh, this is where I come from genetically speaking. Like, actual contact information of these people Jeez. that are alive today. And you can like contact them, they don't have to pick up the phone, they don't have to answer your email. Well, where's this database that just has all our contact I, I, it probably doesn't exist, but I wish if it did, I would love that. Cause that would just be incredible to get to be like, oh great, I have family in Nunavut. I've never met them, I don't know who they are. I just know there are some there and yeah. You could like get their contact in it, then it's totally up to them if they want to like establish a connection or not. And you could go and meet so many new people, and that would also allow you to travel more. Because let's face it, you're more likely to travel somewhere where you already have friends or family, because then you'd have a place to stay. Well, that's it, right? And so people take you in. So that's, yeah. that's that's cool. That's a cool choice then. Just like little little branches yeah. of connection. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, I would probably go back to. like fall time like early fall last year like 2018 around Ooh, september i like a close day this it time. is really close but that's mostly because um a lot of stuff that's happened recently that like for me a lot of, i am that person that has to burn their hand on the stove yeah. to realize <laughs> they need to make some changes and yeah, recently i, I did like two that's hands me, on the on the freaking oven um, and if I could go back to, like, September, August of last year, that, with the knowledge that I have now, that would allow me to, like, go, hey, this is what you need to do so that you don't have to touch the stove in the future. Yeah. Lessons are, like, just that, that little voice who just shows up with a freaking list, like, I don't know how long I'll be here to impart all this knowledge to you, and you're so easily distracted without your ADHD medication that I know you're not taking right now. That's number three on the list, and just, like, I shove a booklet in their hand of, like, don't fuck it up. Well, I think that if you're that kind of person, you coming back in the past and telling you to avoid that is not going to solve the problem. You're going to have to still learn. And then instead, you'll just spend your entire life trying to avoid that problem and walk right into it. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
Plus, I'm pretty sure past me would think future me is like crazy and be like, yeah, you're you're just a figment of imagination. I'm on a bad trip right now, so I mean, this time travel stuff can really get yeah uh, insane. Finicky. Finicky, Are we creating loops? Like, (laughs) what's happening? I have I have my three. Um, I think I'm gonna go shortest to longest. I, I don't. I, that won't be that long. Uh, the first one would be I'd go a thousand years in the future because I'd want to know: Has humanity still survived a thousand years in the future? Have we fucked everything up, or have we made the world a better place? Yeah. And what oh, kind of yeah. cool technologies would we have if we yeah. did successfully make it a thousand years from now? And you know, like in the year twenty five, twenty five. Yeah. I mean, uh, only, Gotta hear it, gotta hear it, see what happens. You know, 3,019, you know? See what, what that. Has I been to uh. <laughs> Now, uh, All the, time shows. the <laughs> second... Are, okay, back, it's all good. Second place I'd go to, I'd go, uh, I, don't, I don't know the exact date, but, um, <clears throat> to 1972, the day that, uh, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon was released. Ooh. And I would go, uh, hopefully they'd have a concert, and I'd go to the concert too that night, and I'd buy myself an album, and I'd just watch all these people go insane over this album, because they'd never heard it before, the world hasn't heard it before, it's just like, Meanwhile, like, you know all the words, and it's just like, how can you yeah. know? I am yeah. the biggest fan, time does yeah. not pull me apart from this place. Oh, man. If you could just go back in time and visit like three different musical artists, yeah. like that itself is a question yeah. that's a hard yeah. one. Some good ones, some good ones. But I would, I would go tell, you know I would what? go back into my past one time to tell myself one thing. What? This one day, uh, I'm in grade nine, so I'm just a little young scruff, and I'm uh, out at a convenience store. Uh, just down the road from my house, and I just buy a Slurpee, some snacks and stuff, and I'm leaving, um, and, like, these these two cute girls of, like, the same age, for all that I know, in the convenience store, too. As I'm walking out, they walk out, and then they say, they say something, like, they, 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 they grab my attention, they're like, hey, they're, you know, whatever, like, What's up, then, young scruff? <laughs> hey there, young child. Yeah, a version of that. <laughs> and I turn around, and I don't know why I said it, but I was like, bonjour. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, nope. <laughs> they just started walking the other way. I love how that's the big thing you want to change. I would go regret. back. To, so I would go. biggest regret is convenience store fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes these things are stuck in your head. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Like, it's just like, why did I say bonjour? Like, what is? Well, let me, like let, me a, let me ask you this. Travel. Yeah, like if what if you said anything else different in that moment, do you think you might have like what made it with those girls? Hey, chickadee. How and might we're still you like be? in grade nine, so like it's still young for that kind of shit. But um, we all grow, man. And I think, well, I think I just that, feel like that's, that's a defining moment for you, because I think since then, anybody who's ever come up to you now is just blown up with charisma from, from this, this I'm place. not that charismatic. <laughs> I'll just, I may be exaggerating, but that's just because he's a good friend of mine, and I always like to I have, I have, I think I'm very interesting, but I don't think I'm charismatic. No, you've got like this warm energy about you that draws people in. Oh, thank you. I actually think I'm kind of like a cocky douchebag a lot of the times. Well, maybe I just like cocky people. Though. Yeah, our self-image is, uh, it's all a perspective, isn't it? Yeah, because you never see yourself the way others view you. Well, that's it, you know. I, I, I totally, I totally feel that. This has been... The Token Talk Show. With Tanner. Derek. And Jillian.